All right, so I want to do a quick video. This is something that's come up a couple of times. Um, so I want to formalize it into a tutorial on how to hand off a flow to a new owner or another owner. Uh, so just kind of talking through the problems. Uh, one of the main problems of Microsoft Flow compared to other workflow solutions we've had in the past is that um, ownership of flows is personal. So when you build a flow, it is your flow you own it uh, and it's it's not possible to sort of well not in under the normal circumstances to build a flow that is sort of owned by a system yes you can use a service account you can use other methods but we're talking about the way that not, probably 90 percent of the people are using power automate they're simply going in there and building flows and though therefore those flows are owned by them individually so when the time comes for them to leave that organization or leave that role, there isn't a simple way to say, okay, here is my flow, you run with it. Um, so in the, within the flow interface, you can designate co-owners or additional owners, but you will always be the owner of that flow. Uh, so that just presents a problem for that whole succession scenario. Uh, so what are some of the possible ways we can address this? Uh, first, you can create flows and solutions. If you don't know about solutions, it's a really good thing to, to learn about. I'll be honest and say I don't know everything and I, I'm trying to use solutions more often, uh, but don't, often, don't always remember to do that. Um, so that is one option because essentially when you create that flow in a solution, the solution itself is a container and the, the owner of the solution can be changed, unlike the owner of a flow. Uh, another possible option is to have an admin change the owner. This is sometimes what you have to do when the original owner has left the organization. Uh, basically at that point, if the flow still exists, then the you know an admin, a power platform or a global admin can go in and change the owner of the flow, basically move it from this user to that user. Um, this is something that I try to avoid having to do just because I know that the admin team in most organizations are very busy people dealing with a lot of other things. Uh, so something like this, unless it is a business critical um, flow, is probably going to be really low on their priority list. So if it's something you can do yourself and not involve the admins or not bother the admins with it, it's even better. So what we're going to do is actually use this option to send a copy of the flow. Uh, just to walk through a quick overview of what we're going to do, uh, we're going to, in the Power Automate interface, send a copy of the flow to the new owner. Uh, that owner will then accept that copy and have to update it to use their connections. Again, going back to something in another video where I talked about connections, basically the flow is your, your property, you build it, it uses your connections and they'll need to update it to use their connections. And again, this is gonna vary a little bit based on the type of flow. What I'm gonna be showing is an instant flow. Other types of flows are gonna be similar, but may have some differences. So just keep that in mind. This is not a comprehensive guide on how to do this for every kind of flow. We're looking specifically uh, today at an instant flow. Uh, also, if that flow is going to be is referenced anywhere else, for example, as I said, this is an instant flow that I'm going to be showing, and I have a column in a SharePoint list that's used to run that flow, so I'm going to need to update that reference because the new flow will have a new flow ID, and that's how the column references the flow. Uh, so that being said, let's jump in and take a look at the flow itself or the the scenario. So this is our risk management site, and in here we have a claims list. And I'm not going to go into the details of how the flow is built, but just know that when I click this Create Tasks button, it's going to basically create the appropriate tasks for this particular claim based on the fact that it is a worker's compensation claim. When I click Run Flow, that will then generate those tasks, and I'm just going to hurry it along by refreshing the page couple of times and when once this tasks created column gets populated that button goes away so 
that's our scenario. Again, we're not talking about the f how that flow works. But we're just talking about transferring it to someone else. Uh, but if we look it at the flow, uh, I'm going to go to my flows, and here is this create test for this claim. That is the flow that was running. So just to prove it, I'm going to open that up. And we can see it ran 33 seconds ago. Perfect. So my next goal is to say, okay, I am leaving um, this department. I'm going to hand off management of our the risk management team to Robert, and he therefore uh, I want him to create a copy of this flow, or, or I want him to own this flow, and be able to maintain it going forward. I don't want to be involved in this process anymore. Uh, now there is an owners button here, and there's an edit button. But when I click edit. Uh, you'll see that basically what it's allowing me to do is add other owners. I can't remove myself. So even if I were to add Robert and click OK, uh, basically that will add him, but I can't remove myself. And if even if he goes in as the owner, he can't remove me. So in other words, I am always going to be the owner. I'm just allowing him to be you know to have that owner access as well so that's not really what I want to do so let me just remove that so instead what I want to do is hand this over to him so I'm going to click on the send a copy now you could export it as a zip file that's sort of the the legacy way of doing this uh, and if you're doing it across organizations across tenants that's what you have to do uh, but within an organization or within a tenant, you can use this send a copy option. So I'll click send a copy. And I will simply leave it as that. Now you do need to provide a description. It needs to be at least 25 words or 25 characters, I think. So I'll just say this is the flow to create tasks in the risk management claims list. And then I'm going to send to R. Hogan and click send. Uh, so that's it. Now there are a couple of rules here. If you see something like uh, a warning, basically if the flow, if you modify the flow and haven't run it since you made that change, it will prevent you. So basically you need to make sure that you have a recent run of the flow uh, to ensure it's working properly before you send a copy. All right, so let me close out of this. And then I'm going to jump over to uh, another browser here where I'm signed in as Robert. I'm going to open up my Outlook, or Robert's Outlook. And here we go. It says, Chad Keeley has shared a flow template with you. So basically, when you do this, send a copy. It's really creating a template of that flow and letting that person create a flow from that template. So pretty clear, there's a button here that says create my flow. So I'll click create, click that. And it's then going to create that flow for me. Just like if you're using any other template, it's going to show me that this is using a SharePoint trigger, SharePoint action, and planner actions. Now, you, obviously, you need to be sure that the person has permission to the SharePoint site where the data lives and the planner where the plans are being, you know, the tests are being created, etc. Uh, it should be obvious, but just in other words, make sure that they have the same access to all of the resources that Flow used that you have. Um, because if they don't, they won't be able to, you know, they'll be able to create the Flow, but they won't actually be able to make it work because they don't have that access. Now, apparently, Robert's never used the Planner Connector, so he does need to sign in here. And there we go. And then I'll click Create Flow. now and it says your flow is ready to go but it's not really so let me just click the got it here and let's edit this I'm going to use the edit with designer and what you will notice oh actually I was wrong it, 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 it you don't need to update the connections apparently this process does that for you um, that's pretty, at least for SharePoint. Let's see if it does the same for Planner. And it does. So, hey, even easier. I was expecting to have to update those connections. 
Uh, so when you do it this way, it does not, you don't actually, it'll, it'll update that as part of that creating that template, which makes sense because when you create a, a, a flow from any other template, it automatically uses your connections. Uh, so that pretty much takes care of, so we didn't need to do that updating the flow step, but we do still need to um, basically update the, uh, the column reference in that claims list because essentially if people use that current button as it is, it's going to run my flow, not Robert's flow. So in order to update that, uh, basically I need the ID of this flow and I can get that right here from the URL, basically the last section after you've got uh, your environments, there's your environment ID slash flows and then whatever is after that slash at after flows is your flow ID so I'm just going to highlight that copy it and then I need to as Robert go into the risk management site and he hasn't actually hasn't been to that site yet so it's not showing up but I can search for it and go there and then go into the claims list and on the create tasks column here I'm going to format this column and without going into the nitty-gritty of how this column formatting works I have another video on how to add a run flow button to a, a SharePoint column uh, but basically this is the section where it's executing a flow and then the parameters for the flow are the ID so this is the ID of my flow now I'm Robert I need to replace that with the ID of Robert's flow so I'll just paste that in hit save close this out and then I'll just create a new case here just as a test and we'll call this Some guy got hurt, and that will be a worker's compensation, and click save, and then I'll see I have that create tasks button. When I click this, it's going to ask me to sign in because this is the first time my Robert's copy of the flow is running, so I'll click continue, and then click run flow. And again, I'll just hurry it along by refreshing the page. And there we go. It's created the task and updated the task created, and the button goes away. Now, just to ensure that the flow actually did what it was supposed to, I'm going to go back to the flow here, see that it succeeded, make sure that, well, if it says anything but succeeded, then you'll know there's a problem, but it, everything worked exactly as it was supposed to. Uh, so we're good to go. Now the last step, which I didn't actually include in, in the overview there, was if there are other people who are using that flow. In other words, if you've designated run-only users, and this is something that exists for uh, instant flows, um, basically, again, because this is a new copy of that flow, those run-only users on my flow are not going to be here. So you just need to basically make sure that whoever will actually be using that flow has access by clicking edit and then entering in the names of the people or emails or groups however you're going to do that in fact I'm just going to make it risk management so that all of the members of that team will be able to use that uh, and as a bonus we'll talk a little bit about making you know adding people as run only users when you do that uh, if you scroll down, you'll see the connections used section here. Basically, this is where you can designate how those actions will be attributed. Uh, in other words, when you know for each of the connectors that the flow uses, you need to decide whether you want um, the the run only user to use their connection, or if you want to use your connection, the owner's connection. Now. This gives you a little bit of flexibility because if you're doing something like sending an email from Outlook and you always want that Outlook email to come from you, then you can basically use this connection and say, use my connection. Um, 
but in the case in this scenario where we want the the person to read data from a SharePoint list, update a SharePoint list, we want that to be attributed to the person who's actually running the flow. So we're going to basically leave it set to provided by run only user. Uh, now the catch there is that when each of those users goes to run the flow, they'll have to agree and basically say yes, I want this, I want to allow this to use my connection. Uh, just understand that when they do that, they're really just allowing the flow to be a proxy for them. It's not giving them access to other content that they have in SharePoint or Planner. It's simply saying, I'm allowing this flow to perform these actions for me in SharePoint or in Planner. So it's not really a matter of giving Power Automate or the flow access to your information. It's just letting that flow be you for the purpose of doing whatever it does. Uh, so basically you would add in the people you want to add, click save, and wait for that to finish, and then you are good to go. So then you'll see run only users with whoever that, uh, the, the users or groups that you've added there. Uh, so hopefully this was useful. Um, this is something that, as I said, is in my mind one of the problems with Power Automate. It's, it's just that that ownership model has always been kind of a, a thorn in the side. Uh, but this is in the case of a, at least for a instant flow, this is the cleanest way to hand that flow off to someone else, whether it's a matter of you building something and then handing it to, you know, the person who's going to use it, or you moving on from a department and needing to, you know, have someone else succeed you in that position. Uh, so hopefully this was useful. Uh, if you have any questions, leave those in the comments below.